G'day and welcome. We're going to revisit the fifth integral in Jim Karanius' list of 100 integrals. And the reason I'm doing so is that I realise that the first video I posted up is rather cumbersome. Now it's not mathematically incorrect, it's quite correct. And I can't help trying to be a teacher. What I was trying to do in that video is to instruct uh, students that integration is the exact reverse of differentiation. In hindsight, I should have done it in the simpler form. So I'm going to show you three, three ways of solving this. The first way was the way that I demonstrated in the first video. I'm going to do that very, very quickly. And that was simply to say this. Here we have a power of some function. The first thing I would do, by the way, is I would change the secant into 1 over cosine. Which immediately becomes cos x to the negative 3. Now this much you can do in your head. With, I'm presuming if you're doing the level of mathematics to deal with these, you probably do them in your head. What was the first method? The first method was simply to say this, that if I'm dealing with powers of a function, that is, if I've got a, a function of x to some power, and I find the derivative, then I get n multiplied by fx to the power 1 less, but because I have a function inside the function, I also multiply by the derivative of that function, f dash x. And that is the pattern for the derivative, whenever we have a function to a power. Now, if I move the dx up here, what I was trying to show in the previous video is that if I integrate both sides, I get y equals, because integrating is the inverse function of differentiating, if I have this pattern, then the exact reverse will be this. And notice, my function here is the cosine of x. The derivative of the function is minus sine of x. So I'm going to put a minus here and a minus out the front. So the two minuses make a plus. And if my power here, if n minus 1 is worth negative 3, what is, what is n worth? It's worth 1 more. Well, 1 more than negative 3 is negative 2. And I'd like to have a negative 2 here, so I compensate by putting a negative half out the front, because negative 2 times negative a half is 1. And what I've done now is I've got a minus minus is plus a half out the front of this negative 2 multiplied by negative sine x multiplied by cos x for the negative 3 dx, which is 1 half. And this integral is the exact pattern of this, and it integrates to give me the function to the power n. And the function is cos x, and the power is negative 2 for n, uh, plus c. And there, there was the solution. So 1 over 2 cos squared x plus c. That was the method I showed because I was trying to get over the concept that integrating is the exact reverse or inverse function of differentiating. Now, that's all well and good. It's not the way I would normally do it. It's if I was instructing students in the beginning stages, I would encourage them to do that for a little bit because it helps students realise the link. Understand the link much more. But there are other ways. Oh, let's start again. Let me show you the other two very, very quickly because you need to see them. I'm going to write sec cubed x as cos x to the negative 3 again. So the second method involves substitution. This is the most common method that more advanced students would use. And I would say, let u 
equal cos x. So du dx will be the derivative of cos x is negative sine x. So du will be negative sine x dx. And substituting, now we want a negative sine x dx, negative sine x dx, so I'm going to put a minus here and a minus outside. So we'll get minus the integral. Now the minus sine x dx, minus sine x dx would be replaced with du. And the cos x to the negative 3, cos x is worth u, would be u to the negative 3, which is quite a straightforward integral. We would get, raise this power by 1 to negative 2, over negative 2, plus c. The two negatives at the front make it positive, so, but the 2 would stay on the bottom, and u to the negative 2 would be u squared on the bottom, and then we would substitute back. Since u was worth cos x, we would have 2 cos squared x plus c, the same answer, this time done using substitution. But there's a third method that I could share as well, and I'd like to do that fairly quickly. I'm just hesitant because my videos tend to get very long, so I've often used just one method per integral in order to try and explain things. Now, there we go, back to where we started. This method works on this basis. I leave the cos x to negative 3. And I replace the dx with the derivative of cos x. Now, in a way, this is doing our substitution, but without the work on the side. What is the derivative of cos x? Well, it's minus sine x. dx. So I can replace that with this, minus sine out the front. So you see it's not very different from the substitution, but I'm just saying the derivative of cos x is negative sine x, and with the dx underneath it would appear at the top. And this one I just treat as u to the negative 3 du. So I get cos x to the negative 2 or negative 2 plus c. The two negatives make it positive, and this negative index brings the cosine squared down. So again, I get that. Now, I've shown you three different methods. Which one's better? It's hard to say. None of them are particularly better. It depends on how your mind thinks and what you prefer. Uh, I can honestly say that if I showed those three methods to an average class of 30 students, the chances are I would have at least one student adopt each of those three methods. So I would not have the entire class adopt one. There'd be some students like this method, without writing the substitutions, but using this notation. Some don't like it at all. Some like the substitution, and there are others who prefer going right back to the basic pattern. It is true of so many things. Methods of factorising quadratics, and methods of handling uh, certain kinds of equations. All I can say is I've now shown you three methods. I want you to adopt the one you like, and I hope this has made sense to you, and I hope it corrects one of my faults in that I did show you a rather tedious method first for this particular integral. So I'll leave you with that, and I thank you for watching.